bringing the people behind our food to life. We call them tree hive bees. They came about because when bees were taken out of the trees, figuratively speaking, and put to work for us, they were put on the ground in big numbers, like they'd have 10 to 60 colonies in a small area, like the area we're sitting in here could, could house 30 colonies, easy. So they were taken from a situation where in nature they were scattered because tree hollows were scattered. And now we're putting them on the ground in a very small area and there'll be lots of bees in one small area, lots of colonies of bees. So the number of bees that are going out and foraging in that area is huge compared to what they evolved with in nature. And I, I'm thinking, you know, that worked okay for the bees when there was lots of clover and a lot of wildflowers and there wasn't this industrial agriculture that we have now and lots of spraying so that they had the forage and they could manage this change. And not only was it a change from the number of bees per unit area, but it was a change from height above the grounds. So we thought, well, if we look at a box of bees that are not as concentrated and have some height above the ground, so they're in a tree itself, their cavity size is more like the natural cavity you'd find in the tree, the size, whereas we've doubled the size by putting them in bigger boxes and stacks of boxes. So we've changed the cavity size too. And then underneath a tree hollow, underneath the colony in a tree hollow is some debris that fell out of the tree hollow as it was forming. And in this debris, there are predatory mites, there are fungal species, there may be bacterial species, a uh, number of other insects. And they all interact with each other, and these predatory mites could eat things that the bees try to kick out of their colony, like varroa mites. So we maybe took away some important relationships that existed in that tree hollow that we don't have in our colonies on the ground. So we wanted to look at that and see what other sorts of things could we add back, maybe thicker walls, because if you think of a tree hollow, they've got two to seven inches all the way around their colony, and we put them in a box with an inch and a half, no, three quarters of an inch. So we probably messed up the airflow and humidity and just the temperature regulation that they need. So if we can make a a tree hive that kind of mimics a tree hollow and get close enough that we can see what we left out that was really important that the bees need now that they're stressed. Can we help the bees that way and maybe help agriculture too? When we put the, the hives on the ground, we introduce them to things that search for, for their food on the ground, like yellow jackets. And so they're right at the height of many bee entrances that are set in groups of four. And so they, they come right into the colony and the bees have never had yellow jackets like this in a tree hollow. So it's a totally new predator. And then you run into skunks and raccoons and possum. All these things hunt on the ground for insects to eat. And so bee colonies are just right. And the bees have not evolved defenses against these new predators yet. What we're finding is, and it's very preliminary, this is, this is not the word of top science yet, but it's a preliminary suggestion that in the tree hive with a, with a debris box, and we don't know if that has anything to do with it yet or not, but the populations of fungi that are beneficial to the bees are higher and, than bees that are sitting in hives on the ground. So yeah, we, we're kind of seeing some things that might be beneficial. We need to set up more exper experiments, but 
I need more colonies, and if I have more colonies, I need help. And so somehow we have to generate enough income to support the research, and that's where I'm at at this point. So I have maybe 15 tree hives right now, and they're an inch and a, and they're a little less than an inch, three quarters of an inch, and maybe the debris box needs to be deeper. I mean, there's all these questions that I can't answer yet. Would it be helpful to the bee populations if everyone in their backyard raised bees? No, we'd probably have too many bees for the amount of food available. But if everybody started to grow flowers instead of lawns and vegetables that have flowers that span the season, so we need flowers in April, probably even in March. We need flowers from March through until the end of October. So if you can find crops that you can plant in your yard, or if you can get a neighborhood together and say, okay, I'm gonna plant my lawn into buckwheat this year for the bees to have a fall flower. And you can start with, I don't know, cilantro early in the season. And, and we'll have a source of flowers for our bees, whether they're bumblebees or um, honeybees throughout the year. And so I think we need to look more at what can we plant that will have enough nectar production for the bees late and early in the seasons. Those are when things get tough for the bees. That would probably be more helpful. I think we have to be real careful about how many bee colonies we have because I think we can overdo it and then they just can't make it because there's, there's too many of them.